A few years ago, I built these shelves along the back wall of this three-sided shed to try to store as many of my attachments in this building out of the weather as possible. It always ends up that I've got some overflow, I've just got too much stuff, and I'm in the process of cleaning out the Quonset hut to try to get some of that into the Quonset hut. But I built these shelves about three years ago, and it's been a huge success, really. I've got some attachments up on top, I've got my mower deck, I've got some storage underneath, and then on the other side of the building, this is the part of the shelving that I used constantly. The stuff that's over there I don't use as much. I'm taking something on and off of this shelf pretty much every day. There's my everything attachments, wicked bucket. I normally keep my pallet forks right here, and everyone's been telling me I'm going to jab those pallet forks through the back of the building. Well, it's been three years and I haven't touched it yet. So I guess I've just been lucky. Maybe I was starting to get a little bit cocky because I managed to break my shelves in a different way. So we got the wicked bucket there. Right now we've got the artillion rock bucket up here because its home should be right here, but we can't put anything right here. Then next to that is the artillion grapple. Normally I keep my tiller here and a box blade here. So this board went right here. So I broke it in a way I would never have expected. I have my regular bucket on, which has the add grapple on it, and that's got a cylinder mounting point up high. And I, I ran the nose of it up under this shelf, and then when I went to back out, I lifted it up just a little too high, it snagged, and ripped that board off. Luckily, all it did was damage that one board and not the whole shelving unit. But when I built this, Half the people told me I was going to jab pallet forks through the back of this. The other half of the comments were saying that these shelves wouldn't hold weight. Well, they've been up for three years. They've had attachments on it the whole time. And I've stood up there with attachments on. So the shelves have been plenty strong when I don't hook onto them and rip them off. So we're going to try to redo this, but also reinforce it and then get my attachments back on here. So if you look around over here, beyond that shelf, we just have this open area, and I've got my tiller, the walk behind weed eater, the, the Jeep, a sprayer, and then I've got all my wall accessories hung up, got my brush cutter there, and a harrow over here. So it's reasonably well organized, and I mostly keep it that way. But we got one problem to solve here. I'm also planning to build out another shelf like the one on this side that's up higher where I can put my brush hog up in the air. But that's a project for another day. One of my favorite additions was hanging the doors on the wall over here. That's worked out great. I didn't remember what I used. It's like it's uh, maybe a half inch by three inch flag screw. So these are right at 12 foot long and the nice thing about having a sawmill is you've always got some lumber around. So let's go see what we've got that's at least 2 by 6 by 12. This really should not be too difficult a task. The only challenge is getting the center of the shelf lifted up and getting it held in place so that it's not sagging when I attach it. What I think I'm going to do is get the board cut to length then clamp it to the shelf board then use the tractor to push up on it in the middle and then that will get me high enough on the ends and if it's high enough on the ends the board's strong enough I mean this board is so much stronger than what I had 
This is still a two by six, but it's actually cut to dry to two inches. So the two by six that broke was an inch and a half. This one is two and an eighth. Then the other direction, that was five and a half. And this hadn't been ripped down, so this is six and a half. So this is going to be substantially, you know, sturdier. But not just that, this is old growth oak. That was young pine. So this should have twice the strength that that other one had. So let's get it cut to length. 147 will take us all the way out to the edge, and that'll let me put the lag bolts further out so that I'm not drilling into the same holes that I just used. Seems like a new hole is going to give me a better hold. Yeah, would your dad have been a good helper for this? Yeah. Forty. Forty. Yeah. Now I've got this end held up. If I'm able to lift the other end the same way, I may not need the tractor as a center brace. These really long construction screws are overkill because <laughs> all I, this isn't holding it up. So I don't know why I'm even using such a heavy duty screw, but it's the first thing I saw when I went in the shop. Now those will be good for running in to help support along with the lag screw. Cause I'm putting the lag screw into the four by fours and then there's a two by six that comes across this way and I'll put the uh, construction screws into that. Now I'm going to pre-drill these holes for the lag bolts. Ideally, I'd like these lag bolts to go in further. They're probably only getting three quarters to an inch of penetration. So I'm going to put a bunch of those construction screws in it as well. Well, in terms of front end attachments, I've got everything in here now, except for the snow plow. And everything is easily accessible, protected from the elements, and I can just switch it back and forth and keep it that way. And the only reason I hadn't been lately keeping it that way is I broke that one shelf. Now, as far as three point attachments, I still have my flail mower setting out. Got my carry-all setting out. And I'm pretty sure that's the only two things. Oh, and a rear blade. So I have three three-point attachments that are not currently under the roof. But maybe I can fit those in the Quonset hut. I've got to get to work on getting that set up and organized and efficient so it can have the sawmill and all of my skid steer attachments in that building. And I think I've figured out how to do it. Anyway, this probably wasn't the most exciting video. But I had work I needed to do, so I took you guys along on the journey. 
Hope that's all right. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.